Hello! Welcome back. It is so good to see you. And if you're new here, it's really nice to meet you. I'm Monty, and on this channel we talk about all things science fiction and fantasy, especially when there's a little bit of romance in there. And today I wanted to talk about a local author I met a few years ago and a couple of the series that I've read of hers. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so today we are talking about Brie Moore. And I met Brie at the Harvest Moon Festival about, um, I think it was in 2018. And honestly, meeting her and chatting about her books was like the highlight of the festival for me. She was so kind, she was so open, and I was amazed, you know, that there was this person that lived here in my hometown. When I met Brie, she was uh, published with a very small publisher, and she had one series out. I bought her first two books while I was there. I got them signed, and all the books I'm going to talk about today they're all available on Amazon. I did check that, um, at least here in the United States. I know if you are looking in another country, you may have to go to the secondhand market. And just really quick, if you do buy any of these books, they may have a different about the author section. See, when I met Brie and when she had, when I bought the first uh, two series that she had out, she did live in my hometown. I have now learned that she has since moved. And that's probably why I didn't see her at the Harvest Moon Festival this year, which was really sad. I was really looking forward to seeing her, you know, and unfortunately the last couple of years, my hometown hasn't put on that festival. So I wasn't able, you know, and we all know why. <laughs> and so I was really hoping to reconnect this year, but like I said, I've since found out from her website that she has moved out of state. I've also learned that she has a couple of more series that she has put out, and I do plan on picking those up because I really love her writing style. She is an author that really knows how to world build and really goes in depth with her world building, and I really find her style to be intriguing. And Brie mostly writes about Arthurian legends and urban fantasy. So the two series I have, one is an Arthurian legend and one is an urban fantasy series. So I thought we could talk about each of these series and I'll give you a non-spoiler review. Let's talk about these two series that I've read. Okay, so the first series, um, and I hope you guys aren't too sad, you're not gonna get the sparkles over here today because I actually have the physical copies of these books. Um, <laughs> so no magic sparkles today. But these are the first two books that I picked up from her should actually be like that. So here's the first two books. I am out of practice doing this because I usually just have pictures. So like I said, these were published by a small publisher called Phase Publishing. And like I said, when I met Brie, I did get her to sign my copies, make a little note in there for me. But let's talk about these. All right, so this is the first book. This is Woven. Woven is a retelling of very familiar Arthurian legends. Pretty much in this book is the tale of the love triangle between King Arthur and Guinevere and Sir Lancelot, as well as Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And it's all woven around the story of Elena, the Lady of Shalott. Now, if you're thinking, Monty, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, I know it is. But the way that Brie crafts this tale and really puts together a story makes it very refreshing and so intriguing to read. Like I said, I'm not going to give any spoilers away. I'm just going to read the back of the book to kind of give you an overall summation of the plot. For 30 years, Elena has sat in her tower, fingers caught in an eternal dance, cursed to weave the tapestry of life on her loom bound by an enchanted mirror whose magic shows her the distant lives of the people of Camelot. She must forever watch a land which remains ever beyond her reach. Elena despairs that she will ever experience more than just the shadows of life until one day a face appears in the mirror that will change her life and possibly her fate forever. Guinevere is losing her mind when a severe injury to her head nearly kills her and awakens alternate personalities suppressed from her past Guinevere learns that one of them is plotting with a knight of the round table to murder King Arthur and take control of Camelot. In the midst of the war, Guinevere fights to save both her own life and the man she loves. 
each day coming closer to succumbing to this violent personalities within her. This is inspired by Arthurian legend and Lord Alfred Tennyson's ballad, The Lady of Shalott. Woven spins a tale of two women who must risk everything to save those they love most in an epic of enchantment, love, and madness. All right, so that kind of gives away, I think <laughs> the back of the book gives away more than I would have even told you about this book, but it's okay. I do want to say a couple of things about this book. Now, if you're familiar with Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, that story is in here. However, the knight's name is changed to Sir Gareth in this book. So just note that. Okay, so one other warning about this book. There are scenes of S.A. in this book, and I know, we all hate to think about it. We all hate to, to um, you know, to admit that that kind of stuff happens. In this book, though, I will tell you that the scenes are handled very carefully and they're absolutely not gratuitous, um, but they are in there. And the only reason I say that is because I think sometimes authors put things like that in their books just kind of for a shock value, and that's absolutely not the case in this book. So, but do know, be warned, there are a couple of scenes of essay in this book. And also, if you're familiar with the legends of King Arthur and you know of Guinevere's tale, you kind of know how this story is going to end. But if you're really going to read this, and I think anytime you read those kinds of stories where they're retellings of legends that we all kind of know the how it ends, know that it's the journey that gets you there and not so much the ending in these books. Because I'm telling you, with this book, the journey you're on is one that you're not going to expect. And there are some amazing twists and turns in this book. And it's, it's a wild ride. This book is truly about unrequited love and heartbreak. So I absolutely love this book. I was so surprised that this book was like a first novel from an author because it's impressive. It is so well done. It's so well written. Like I said, Brie really knows how to world build. And honestly, my favorite character in this book was Elena, the Lady of Shalott. I loved her story. I loved every moment I got to spend with her in this book. And it was amazing. So this book is written in third person limited. So there is a lot of jumping between different characters' perspectives. Um, and also I'm gonna tell you, there is kind of a jump between timelines. So it's not technically linear the way you're reading it. And it can come off as kind of confusing when you're first reading it because not everything, not all the characters' lives run in parallel. But I'm telling you, just take a deep breath, go with it, um, and you're going to enjoy the book because the story is so good. But if you try to start piecing together the timeline right away, you're going to get lost. I ended up giving this book five stars. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the second book in this series is Bound. I'm going to tell you, it is a different tale than Woven, but it really rounds out the characters and the storyline in Woven. Now, both of these books can be read as standalones. Um, I think you would enjoy both of them if you didn't read the other, but they work together so beautifully. And it's kind of hard to explain how they work together so well, unless you read the books and because I'm not giving away spoilers. So this book uh, contains the story of Morgan Le Fay, as well as the story of Tristan and Isolde. I hope I said that right. I, I've heard it is old. I've heard it is old day. You know who I'm talking about. And this book is really a book about regret and second chances and redemption. It involves time travel, magic, and the ability to live a life that maybe you wouldn't have been able to live otherwise. So once again, I'm not going to spoil this book for you. So I'm just going to read you the back cover to give you an idea of what goes on in this book. Morgan Le Fay still dreams of being buried alive. 
but at least she isn't dead. After waking up on Avalon, Isle of the Priestesses, Morgan is given a choice. Go back in time to fix the mistakes that killed King Arthur and destroyed Camelot, or commit to a life of banishment and seclusion. Her choice will give her another chance at healing and love if she can find the courage to accept it. Tristan de Linus must stop a war and save his uncle's kingdom. Falling in love with the Irish princess Isolde, his uncle's intended bride, wasn't part of the plan. Now he has a choice. Maintain his honor as a knight and escort Isolde safely to the kingdom of Cornwall, or follow his heart and claim her for himself. In this riveting sweet sequel to Woven, the classic tragic love story of Tristan and Isolde is retold and given new life as a tale of healing and redemption. So I'm going to say if you're familiar with the story of Tristan and Isolde, you're going to be very familiar with how they're portrayed in this book. Honestly, there's not a lot of deviation from the plot of the original story of them in this book. However, <laughs> there is a twist to it and you'll have to read the book to find out what it is, but do, I will say there is a definite different perspective with it than the typical story, the, the, the traditional story. And also if you are someone who likes a love story, but you really want it to feel relatable and based in reality, this, this is the love story for you. It is, it, it's nothing like your traditional romance book. There's no insta love. There is, it's none of that. Let me just say it feels real and you truly, like it lets you build the ties with the characters as they're building ties with one another. So at the end of it, you feel so involved and so invested in their love story. Honestly, if you want to read a really good love story with a redemption arc for a very unlikely character, this just may be the book for you. I'm going to be honest, I fell in love with this book as well. Like I said, Moore knows her history and you feel so immersed in the history and every, the times that this that this that these stories took place. I absolutely loved the emotions and the conflict in this book. And honestly, I was so in love with Morgan by the end of this story. Like, I don't know how you can't be. I gave Bound five stars as well. Now, I do want to say when I was on Brie Moore's website, I did notice that she has republished both these books. So she's updated them, um, probably added some things, changed some minor details and republished them. And they are under the Shadows of Camelot series now, and their titles have changed to The Lady's Last Song and The Queen's Quiet End. All right, so next up, we have an urban fantasy series from Brie Moore, and it is the Lost Souls series. And this is a series that involves vampires, shifters, and magic users. So quick overview, in this world, being a shifter, or what they call a paranormal, is illegal. And if you are a paranormal being, you have to be registered with the government. And you must comply with their education programs. That really sets up the events for what takes place in the first book. So book one is Ravenborn. I'm going to read you the back of the book. Harper King is being hunted by the government. Her crime? Being a shape-shifting half-raven woman. And she's not the only one they're after. Supernatural beings like Harper are arrested every day, a fate she's dodged so far. But when a single miscalculation lands her in a naturalization camp, she must choose, be naturalized or be killed. Between magical wards that imprison her at the camp and a rebellion brewing, can she find a way to escape before her wings or her life are taken from her? In a few days, Tyson Miller will be charged with murder. Today, he's just a human counselor at Camp Silver Lake. According to Tyson, his therapy makes all the difference for the paranormals making the transition to naturalized citizenship. Even if it means encourage them to give up their shifting abilities and powers. But as he uncovers the dark history of Camp Silver Lake and the leader's mental instability, 
he'll be forced to face a devastating truth. He's been fighting for the wrong side all this time. So I gotta tell you, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, I loved it. I loved the world. I loved the magic system in it. And to be honest, there is a scene in this book that absolutely made me cry. It was heartbreaking. And I will tell you, there are some turns, twists and turns in this book that I was not expecting. Uh, Brie Moore is really good at, you think you're going down one path and then like that, oh my gosh, you're wrong. Um, but in the most delightful way. So I gave this book four stars. All right, so the second book of the series is Serpent Cursed. And this book picks up roughly right after where uh, Ravenborn leaves off. So this book really deals more with the multicultural mythos and legends around the different paranormals and really progresses the plot along. Let me read you the back cover of this one. Becca Wood has been cursed by an ancient race and she's running out of time to find a cure. After a terrifying transformation from woman to serpent, Becca finds herself in danger of being exterminated by a tribe of Alaskan raven shifters. Even Quinn won't be able to protect her from certain death unless he convinces the tribe's chief to set her free. While imprisoned, Becca meets Avon, a charming man from Lebanon who might be the answer to all of her problems or a catalyst for them. Harper King's mind is missing a critical memory, one that she isn't sure she wants to remember. The fragmented memories left by the Beryllium Orb follow Harper to the wilds of Alaska, where she's closer to finding her parents and her own people than ever before. Though she's loath to admit it, Harper needs Tyson as an ally. A rebellion is brewing and joining it could be the key to Harper discovering the truth of her past and redeeming her future. Back at Camp Silver Lake, a dark force bides its time until it can be unleashed. Harper and Tyson's story, no. Harper and Tyson's story continue in Serpent Cursed, book two of the Lost Soul series. So this book does cover two distinct plot lines. Um, it's also third person limited, so you are jumping from different characters. And you're jumping between the two different plot lines because they are happening roughly at the same time, but in very, very different locations to very different people. Once again, there are some unexpected twists in this book that made it very, very interesting. I absolutely love that. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, I love the character of Becca in this book. Becca, I liked her. I really liked Becca. I felt an instant connection with Becca. I will tell you, I think this book has a lot more action in it than the first book did. Uh, we're moving, it's a little more fast paced than the first book. And I ended up giving this book four stars. All right, the third book in the series is Coven Bound. Now, this book brings back a couple of the characters from the first book that we meet briefly, but this book gives them a whole storyline and we really get to know them in depth. And let me read you the back of the book. She'll risk raising a demon to get her sight back. An illegal coven has formed at Camp Silver Lake and the promise of restoring her physical sight and increasing her witch's powers Mandy joins the coven. Her blood will be required to activate a pentagram that spans the United States. But blood magic is dangerous and no one can escape its taint. Will gaining, will gaining freedom be worth the price of her soul? Curing a harpy's curse was never part of Tyson's career plan. But then, neither was becoming a dreamwalker. He'll have to face his fears of losing his spirit in the astral realm to find Harper before his time runs out. Bounds of the Others by Anne Bishop will love the Lost Souls series. So this book definitely gives you a better understanding of the different magic us users in this universe, in this world. And you do learn a little bit more about some of the paranormals. Now, don't worry, like the back cover said, Harper and Tyson are absolutely in this book again. It's still following their storyline in depth. And I'm gonna tell you, I loved Zeke. Um, when I met him in the first book, I wasn't super excited about his character. I didn't really like him all that much. But in this book, oh my gosh, fell in love with him. I mean, he may be flawed, but he's interesting. The world building in this book is absolutely amazing once again. And the description in this book is on point. I gave this book four stars. So the final book in this series is Rebel Born. And I haven't read it yet. I feel awful. I... <laughs> 
when last time I, I met Brie and bought these books, Rebelborn was not out yet. So <laughs> I am going to be picking that up and I will let you know how I feel about it and how the series ends. Now, if you are interested to learn more about Brie Moore, I do suggest you check out her website. I will have it linked down below in the description box. Like I said, she does have some more urban fantasy series that are out. I definitely want to check them out. And if you like really well written urban fantasy, I really think you should give her a go. They're fast paced, at least the ones I've read are very fast paced, um, but there's so much description. You really do get a sense of the world. Um, her characters are on point. It's just, she's a really good author. And really this video was to show that you should always support your local authors. Um, take the time, if you see them, you know, in your local bookstore doing a signing, go talk to them, learn what they're writing about, learn why they write. And you know, you just never know because, you know, that creative writing teacher that teaches at your local college may just you know, turn into a really epic fantasy author. <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke because Brandon Sanderson teaches at one of the colleges that are not too far from me. But seriously, support your local authors, talk with them, buy their books, give them a go, give them a chance. I'm really happy that I found Brie Moore and I'm super excited to read the rest of her works. And if you enjoyed this video, please do consider to give me a little bit of love on this channel. You can give me a little thumbs up and if you would like to see more from me, do consider hitting that subscribe button so you always know when I post. And let me know in the comments, have you ever met any of your local authors? Have you read their books? And do either of these series kind of tickle your fancy? Are you interested in reading either one of them? I'd love to have a chat with you down below in the comics. And until, in the comments, in the comments, sorry, it's late. So until next time, do take care of yourselves and Love you, bye.